presentation is about testing piles under existing structure and the focus is going to be testing under existing structures which is a unique uh, case for testing and it's not the usual testing scenario we're gonna after a short introduction just about what is a pile uh, what is a structure we're going to talk about what is so unique about testing the piles under structures we're going to talk about the main testing methods which are applicable to this uh, scenario which is going to be the uh, pulse echo testing uh, with our product the pet and the parallel seismic test which is with our uh, parallel seismic instrument and the cross hole ultrasonic uh, monitoring or cross hole testing uh, with our product the chum we're gonna have time for q a and i really encourage you at any time to either uh, raise your hand with the presentation or um, write some text uh, with your questions and mr mm -hmm. uh, zelfriki will summarize that and we'll have time for q a at the end mm -hmm. So some definitions. A pile is a slender deep foundation element. It can be precast uh, or uh, cast on site. When I mean slender, it means that it's much longer than it's wide. Um, that's something you all probably know already. A superstructure for this presentation or a structure is just anything connected on top of the pile. It can be a beam, a slab, a column, or the complete structure, anything which lies connected firmly to the top of the pile. The typical scenario for, for piles under a superstructure is that they are usually old. We don't have the S-made documents or we have a very partial information. And also typically the access is problematic. Not all cases are always correct, but this is a typical scenario. <clears throat> Here is a typical scenario. We have a bridge. We can't see the top of the piles. We have no idea about how long the piles are. We just maybe want to expand this bridge or we just want to know when it, maintenance is due and we have no information. We want to gather it. Another scenario here, this building needs to be expanded. Very little information about the pile exists. For some reason, documents are lost and so on. Another example, here the side of the piles are is visible, uh, but we have not enough information um, for any future plans about this bridge. So what are the challenges that we're facing when we're going to test the uh, pass? Well, first of all, we have limited or, or, or no information about the estimated length of the piles, the, the concrete type, the installation method, the type of the foundation. It can, it can be a footing. We, we just can't know from the top. Um, another thing is that the, the existing structure interferes it, with the, the pile. It's actually changing its, its properties, the mass, the impedance, the, the way the, the waves are flowing. Um, we have a, sub, a small sample. Usually the strength of pile testing is when you test a lot of piles and you can compare them one to another. But in this case, under the existing structure, we have a limited amount of piles to test. The physical access is also sometimes tricky, which makes testing conditions less ideal and harder to get quality information. Uh, underground utilities such as basements and things like that can also interfere and um, sewage lines which we don't know about all these things are uh, adding more and more challenges to testing under uh, existing structures the main and uh, the main integrity methods that we are uh, going to discuss today for testing under structures are first the pulse echo method. It's a very known and very popular method uh, backed by this ASTM standard. It is, let's say, so-so 
suitable for testing under existing structures. In many cases it is, but there are many caveats to watch. The parallel SASIC method is definitely suitable for testing under existing structures. In fact, it was designed for testing in those uh, scenarios. The ASTM standard for this um, test method is currently in final ballot on the ASTM uh, main committee and it's going to be ready, I believe, within a month. The technical contact for the parallel seismic uh, standard is uh, Dr. Joram Omir, a co-founder in our company. Um, the third method we're going to discuss is the cross-hole uh, ultrasonic monitoring or logging, also called CSL. Um, this method will hardly ever be suitable for testing under existing structures, but I still do want to mention it because there might be some cases where uh, this uh, could be applicable. So it's good to have this somewhere in the back of, the, of your mind that it's possible. So uh, with, without any uh, further delay, let's go into each of the testing methods and see how it's applicable. Let's go. So first we're gonna discuss the pulse echo method, PEM, um, with our product PET. We're gonna watch a short uh, video, a three minutes video, and um, then we're going to see how this method can be uh, modified and applied to testing under structures. PET, pilot eco tester, low strain impact testing. The mission, test the integrity of 12 concrete piles on this construction site. The tester goes to the first pile and prepares the top for testing. A small amount of special putty is attached to the bottom of the pet. The pet is pressed against the pile top. The top is lightly hit with the hammer. A compressive wave travels down the pile and is reflected back from the toe. The blow is recorded on the screen. Good pile. The next pile has a defect that reflects the wave. The reflectogram on the screen shows a necking at a depth of 5 meters. The test results are now analyzed in the office and the report produced. The PET, your compact yet powerful tool for testing the integrity of deep foundations. Thank you. Okay, and we are back. The next thing I want to show you is the PAL wave program. The PAL wave program is a simulation of uh, wave propagation in piles, uh, which just gives some back background about how this uh, method works. So uh, when you go to the pile wave uh, application, you can see that screen. We, on the left, we see the shape of the pile. The main pane here is the way the waves are traveling down and up in the pile. And the top pane is the head velocity of the pile. So we can see that uh, when we hit the top of the pile, let's do that with some delay. Okay, so this is the hammer impact. 
and a compressive wave is traveling down the pile. The wave keeps on traveling until it reaches the bottom of the pile. At this stage, it is com converted from a compression wave to a tensile wave, and then it reaches back the top of the pile, pulls it down again, and that's about it. If we have some kind of a defect in the pile, for example, a necking here, that's also going to reflect the wave. So some part of the wave is going to be reflected from this defect and from the bottom of the defect. And then the rest of the wave travels all the way down and back up and we see the echo from the top. If, however, instead of a necking, we would have a bulge here, this part, instead of traveling down, representing a, a compression wave, will be going upwards like that. So now the wave goes up and then down. And again, the rest of the wave travels down and reaches the bottom of the pile. So that's really a very, very quick overview of that. I just want to mention one more point. In case there is a skin friction, let's reset that to a cylindrical pile. In case there is some skin friction, which is usually the case when the pile is not in air but in soil, the wave will become weaker and weaker. And we will have a very faint, if any, echo from the toe of the pile. In this case, we apply some amplification so that we can see the pile as if it was in air. Okay, and I'm going to go back to the presentation. Okay, let's see some real life examples of real piles. So this would be a good pile with the trigger hammer, the hammer trigger and the echo from the bottom at 10 meters. This would be a pile with a necking and this would be a pile with a bulge. If we wouldn't have a superstructure like, and let's call it regular testing, the sonic test can find the pile length inclusion of uh, foreign materials if they are large enough, horizontal cracking, joints and stage concreting, uh, sharp changes in the cross section of the pile, and even distinct changes in soil layers. However, in our case, pile length is the only thing we can expect. There we go. So how do we adapt the pulse echo method to test under existing structure? I'm going to get over that very quickly uh, for uh, those who did get it. Um, so when the top of the pile is round and the column is square, we can sometimes get some kind of a notch there. For example, here in this case. Can you hear me, uh, everyone? Can you see the slides now? Okay. Yeah. Of course, of course. We can test here. Great. In this case, we have some access here to the top of the pile. Or here. The other alternative, if we don't have access to the top of the pile at all, is to cut a small notch at the side of the pile. Like in this case, this is a part of a retaining wall and this notch was cut into this pile. There's another example uh, with the sensor inside, so you can see the side of the notch. It's constructively uh, neglectable compared to the size of this pile or column. And in another case, another pile in a retaining wall, and a small notch was cut there. You can see the hammer for proportion. This gives you the, uh, the uh, good option for testing uh, with the pulse echo method. Okay, and the first rule is when testing under an existing structure uh, is to lower your expectations. The pulse echo method is highly affected by, by the waves from the superstructure. 
Uh, note that when you hit the pile and you're creating a compressive wave going down, the same wave also travels up into the superstructure and it can be reflected from any edge. It can be reflected from the ceiling or from the side of the beam. It can go sideways, upwards, anywhere. Moreover, uh, the wave going into the superstructure is not attenuated as much as the wave going down. down. And there's no way of telling what the waves are doing in the superstructure. It can be very misleading. For that, more than, more, more than one pile, uh, ideally many more, should be tested so that we can check repeatability. The assumption is that the piles are going to generate a unique signal while the superstructure uh, at each location is going to generate something different. Uh, so that uh, if we do get a repeatable uh, result, we can assume with some certainty that it is really the pile and we are not just testing the ceiling or the beam. Never trust the results of just one pile. And uh, the only real expectation here is the, the length of the pile. We don't get much more information, if at all. Uh, to summarize, um, we recommend to try. If it works and we get reliable and uh, trustworthy information, great, because the alternative is, is much more expensive and slow.